Every evening, supper time, and just as I wear out, along comes Easter, Valentine's, and Santa way down south. It's sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie, all right. Lord Almighty, work is over. Sweet potato pie now. Pass the chicken, I'll have biscuits, chicken. peas, cream gravy, hopping john. Oh, yes. But only once on seconds, please, then stand Stop back, it. bring it on. Mmm, sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie for three. Land the Goshen, smell that kitchen, sweet potato pie for me. <laughs> Morning, Miss Perkins. True son. Tell Miss Perkins. Sons and daughters. Yeah, buddy. Know the way. Ow. A mouth water. I feel. Your heart open. Rooms of laughter. And then I've been waiting and waiting. Sorry. Every time we do this, we get caught. We ain't gonna get caught this time, Billy Bob. If my mom finds out, she won't. My mom always finds out. That's why I'm glad I don't got them all. Preach, don't look. Why not? Because they're not hardly wearing nothing. Come on, Billy Bob. I never heard of one law says you can't watch two girls reading magazines. Are you so, so excited about the party? If Billy Bob pays any attention to me. I thought Billy Bob held your hand at the picture show. I thought he was going to, but he didn't. I think Preacher likes you. Really? Why do you think he gave you that stuffed squirrel, Janice? Maybe he just wanted to get rid of it. Janice, what did I just say? Stuff squirrel. He likes me. Sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie, all right. <laughs> we're gonna get Love so much trouble, we're gonna get caught. No, we won't. Pie, sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie. Hey, little brother. We didn't do nothing, Butch. Oh, you in our field, little brother. Since when is this your place? Since we staked our claim. You want to get through, you got to pay a toll. We ain't paying you nothing. Fine, you don't got to pay, but if you want to pass, you got to eat the head. <laughs> don't do it, Preach. Shut up, Billy Bob. Many times, always with the shortcuts. There are no shortcuts in life, Lionel. Lover, I'm talking to you, baby, but I can see you're not listening. I assure you, my dove, I hear every euphonious word, every <laughs> golden syllable. Excuse me, miss. Can we help you? I require more help than you gentlemen could possibly provide at your tender age. But could you help my husband get us the heck out of here, pumpkin. Help has arrived. Good day, young gentlemen. Where God treat earth all of I'm telling you, preach, I didn't hold her hand. But I heard her say you did. I did. Preach, look at this. Stan the main Yuzu continues to struggle as the Cardinal is a heartbreaker to the Brooklyn Dodgers. Things keep on like this, we might as well forget about that trip to the series. Stan will pull through, Preach. And come October, we'll be right there, eating red hots and watching the birds take it off. You ever seen anything like that, Preach? Mm. 
You ever seen a thing like this? You really don't care what God says when it looks down on you, do you? <coughs> Preach, you can't go to other people's property. You boys. Don't be hiding back there like a couple of criminals. Billy Bob. You have something you want to confess? Happy birthday, son. <laughs> Thirteen. Officially makes you a man. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. Yeah, thanks, Mr. D. Can you make mine cherry instead? You licked it, preacher. Just barely. Oh my gosh, my party! Bananas, it's just great with you. Come on, preach! Don't slam that! <laughs> All right, Billy Bob's coming out to pitch for the Cardinals. Here he goes, Jackie Robinson in. Strike one! Right here, preacher. Preacher's famous knuckle. Here we go, girls. My special three-layer cake and all the tutti fruity you can eat. Cormay, Janice, I know those ant bites are painful, but you mustn't scratch. Yes, Ms. Murphy. I don't want to get dirty. What's it matter? It's going to get dirty sooner or later. I want to keep it clean. Is that all right with you? Here's Billy Bob showing his famous fastball to Preacher's Star. Preacher knocks it out of the county. Do you suppose those boys will outgrow this baseball foolishness? Boys, the Pickens County Flower Show is less than one month off. I'd hate to be in your place if I have to go there empty-handed. Thanks a lot, Malcolm. There goes that clean ball. Go get it, Malcolm. Malcolm, wait, let the five o'clock pass. adult of the house? Why, yes. Why? What lovely roses. Roses are so elegant and romantic, don't you think? I do, yes. Madam, I am Miss Lily Jane Bobbitt. Miss Bobbitt, from Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Country children. My mother and I have taken rooms here. Would you be so kind as to point out the house? It belongs to a Mrs. Sawyer. Why, that's it right there. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, miss. Being such a hot day and all, 
Wouldn't you like to rest a spell and have some tutti frutti? Yes, by all means, join us. Very fattening, tutti frutti. But may I see you kindly? Come along, mummy. has a disorder of the tongue, so it is necessary that I speak for her. She has made dresses for the society of many cities, including Memphis and Tallahassee. No doubt you've noticed and admired the dress that I wear before you this afternoon. Every stitch of it was hand sewn by my mother. She can copy any pattern and just recently won a $25 prize from the latest home journal. Please, advise your friends and family. Thank you. Hello. May I help you? Step lively. <laughs> now, from the get-go, I don't allow smoking, drinking, or swearing. Somebody around here's birthday. The bat. Stan the man muse you model. That's right. Thanks, lady. It's perfect. Well, you're welcome. Now, boys, it's summertime. You coming back to work for me or what? Yeah, we are. Only four months, one week, and two days to the series. I haven't given you permission to go, son. That's something we'll discuss based on your behavior for the next four months, one week, and two days. <laughs> Come on up and have some cake, Speedy. All right. Girls, boys, have some more tutti frutti. Cheer up, girls. Pepper shaker. Good morning, young lady. I'm Pastor Daniel Williams. I notice you have a small tatter on your shirt. As the spiritual leader of this community, you really ought to be flawless in dress as well as decorum. Well, I serve the Lord, not high fashion. Here you are. Pastor, little girl lends you her bike. My wife, Mr. Trump. Well, I hope so. Good morning. 
Much obliged, little lady. Ma'am? Good morning. May I hand you one of these flies? Thank you, ma'am. Morning, Mr. Trump. Who's Albert? Hi, Mr. Trump. Can we give you a hand with that? Oh, you dang betcha. Grab six of these grain bags, throw them in the back of my pickup there. Never mind, Mr. Trump. Yeah, we'll see you no, later, you Mr. Trump. Six of these. Right in there. Thank you very much. Some young men follow me around the countryside. Young gentlemen, now would you have to have an automotive repair facility here in Fair Meadow? We got the best, mister. It's Speedy himself over at Speedy's garage. He's a war hero. A war hero auto mechanic named Speedy? Well, by golly, that's someone I would dearly love to meet. You're up good. four. All right. Yeah, well, let's yeah. shuffle, let's shuffle them up. Good. Shuffle them good. Yeah. All right. Let's see. All right. Turn it up. All right. What do you Give me some double this time, wouldn't you? <laughs> May I join you? Oh, ma'am. Jim, make room for the lady. Why me? Get out of here. Stay close, Jeb. Gambling scares me. Could you teach me how to play that game? Domino. Oh, sure. Well, Mr. Speedy. What's a good one? I replaced the fan belt. But I think the real problem is your battery's not holding the charge. Is that so? If you want my advice, you should get your new one in there as soon as you can. Well, you are the expert, Mr. Speedy, so I shall take your advice. You want me to get on that? Well, now, 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 my brother is also a fine mechanic, and he gets very upset with me when I take my automotive business elsewhere. So, because of family loyalty, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to wait. You understand? Oh, uh, you bet. Yeah. Harley? Lovely young thing. Is this your beloved or, or the other gentleman? You mind putting that down? Sports star, war hero, first class, top notch automobile repair man. Mr. Speedy, you have lived an exciting life. Baby doll, I think it's about time we leave, don't you? We're on our way, my dear. I assume it's okay if I draw a check from my personal bank in Birmingham? I suppose that'd be all right. That's uh, $3 for the belt and the labor. Bye -bye. See us now, yeah? Ma'am? Eleanor. What 
goodness, Petey, you're quite busy. Uh, it's all them old cars from before the war breaking down. Uh, bad for the owners was good for me. I'm even thinking about expanding. Hey, you just uh, let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. Indeed I shall, my friend. Until we meet again. Okay. Ma'am? How you doing, honey? Fine, thank you. Who are they? I believe those are the Quinches from Birmingham. I see. I told you the battery's bad. Listen, are the boys still here? Oh, they've done the jobs and gone. I paid them 50 cents apiece. That was awfully kind of you. Well, the thought of turning those two loose on the city of St. Louis, <laughs> I hate to think. <laughs> I, I wouldn't worry. I don't reckon the cards have much of a chance what, with the way things are going and all. Seems the boys got a crush on your new little neighbor. You caught that too, did you? <laughs> I told them they were going about it all wrong. I gave them some good advice on how to woo women. Well, I best get on home. Yeah. Hey, you ever feel like staying? 25 cents an hour. Anytime you want. All right, your, your play. Surely think about that. What are you gonna do? Would you focus on this game? Morning, Juliana. How are you this morning? Now, Eleanor, I'm sure there's a logical explanation for all this. I don't want an explanation, Speedy. I want my roses. Speedy Thorne, what is that siren all about? Oh, Mildred, it's awful. It's just simply awful. Eleanor's roses, her beautiful roses, stolen. Oh, shoot, nobody stole them roses. Preacher and your Billy Bob brought them over to young Bobby this morning before they started my yard work. Billy Bob! Oh, I hope that boy's got on his running shoes. Baby, I'll treat you like one. Now come down. I ain't never coming down. I swear it. Suit yourself. That appears to be the only way I'll get any peace around here. And you can forget that trip to St. Louis. Fine. Cardinal stink anyway.
Billy Bob? Please come down and eat. I don't want me supper. I'm gonna stay up here all night. Son, sometimes in the heat of a moment, we say things that later we realize we just did not mean. of you and your friend to bring those lovely roses. It wasn't nothing. I'm not sure your mama would agree. Thing is, my daddy gave her those rose bushes before he went off to the war. And when he didn't come back, she decided that every year she'd enter those roses in the flower shop. I reckon I ruined it for her this year, not to mention my trip to the World Series. Well, from where I'm standing, there's only one thing to be done. You must make moral restitution, Billy Bob. Well, I don't know what that means, but if you think it'll help... You have to do something right to cancel out the wrong. What's needed here is a symbol of your grief and regret at this unfortunate incident. Yeah. Dang. I'd still like to buy anything. The stores are all closed. Perhaps if we both sleep on it, We'll come up with a proper solution by morning. Your daddy was the best dancer in the whole county. I bet you got his dancing feet. I don't know, Ma. Let's see. Come on. of a woman's spine. Your left hand, just so. Now, just pretend you're leading the woman through class. That's right. Now you have the idea. And I know how much going to that World Series means to you. And I know it was something your daddy wanted you to do. So, of course, you can go. But darling, I want you to listen to me. There'll be plenty of time for proper courting when you're older. You're too young to be going so crazy over one little girl. She's so cute. She's the cutest little dickens I ever saw. No, I just... I don't think it's healthy. To hell with it! Billy Bob! I'd pick all the roses in China for that girl. And there's nothing you could say that changed my mind.
It is. <gasps> My word. Oh, the Lord has visited his grace on you, Eleanor. Isn't that right, Mildred? I do believe we are all witness to an event of great spiritual magnitude. <laughs> Folks, I think what we're witness to is some of the finest work with needle and thread that we may ever see. Short of a skilled surgeon. Well, if that don't take the whole biscuit, we'll go to all this trouble. It's moral restitution. What did you say? A symbol, Mrs. Murphy, to cancel out the wrong. It is the view of my late lamented father that whenever possible, we must balance what we ought not to do with what we ought. Well, how very nice of you, Mrs. Murphy. Now, if you are not completely satisfied, there will be no charge for the work. Now, if you would come over here, you'll have to tell me exactly what's needed to be done on each article of clothing. Eleanor, had to see this myself. Word sure travels fast around here. Well, you're talking about the Lord's work. No stopping the tone from <laughs> wagging. My, look at this. Hey, I hope you're not too mad. Guess I gave them boys some bad advice I'd reckon on how to court women. Uh-huh. <laughs> no lawman shouldn't have any part in aiding and betting flower thieves. Well, lucky for you, I can usually spot good intentions. Whoa! Okay, now, put it down, put it down. Oh, no, I'm gonna get you. Oh, hold up, what's that? Good Lord, you fell for that. Bill! Oh, Redbird. Come on, Bird, catch the bombs. Oh, get, 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 oh, I got you What's the guy that's falling for that? <laughs> well, if I was you, I'd run. Let's <laughs> go! When are you gonna fix this man? Hey, Billy Bob. You ever notice how Speedy's always talking real sweet to your mom? What are you saying? I was saying nothing. I was just wondering if you noticed. Well, I know what you're getting at. You might as well just forget. It ain't never gonna happen. At your service, man. I'll take care of it. Thank you. As you were. I'll strike one swing. Oh, boy. Half a What's this? Oh, it's just old Rosalba Cat. What's she doing in Miss Sawyer's yard? She's taking a shortcut from the bare field over yonder, I reckon. Taking a shortcut? Without even asking? Free country preach. Says who? Rosalba Cat. You want them berries, Rosalba? Oh, gosh, Breach, what are you doing? Are you trying to ruin our trip to the World Series? You gotta pay the tariff. What kind of tariff are you talking about? I'm not paying the tariff. Then you don't get no berries. Gosh, don't do it, Breach. Gosh, dang it. Give me that. What's this for, anyway? You know you can't read nothing. I can read better than you. 
preacher labor pay. She didn't do anything to us. Ah. Dang it. Dang you, preacher. Stop that, you boys. Stop this instant. Don't you know that gentlemen are put on the face of this earth for the protection of ladies? Let me help you with your berries. Lord knows this town has been witness to every kind of yours and preacher's mischief. But cruelty is another thing entirely. I am so afraid you'll grow up to be someone I will not care to know. There's a limited supply of adequate reading material in this town. Now, are you all right? I'm fine. Honestly, do you suppose boys behave like this in towns like Memphis, New York, Hollywood, or, or Cairo of Egypt? Here. Blow. It's a fine situation when a lady can't walk safely in the public daylight. Resemble cat. Best be coming home with us. Yes, Daddy. Where them bears for your mama's pies? Sir, I can speak to an event which recently transpired that caused your daughter to arrive without the berries. Daddy, can I and my friends stay and eat? Not today. Come on now. Psst. We are sisters now, and I don't suspect those boys will be bothering you anymore. Now, you come by our house tomorrow, and we'll have a lovely day. Oh, and my name's not Maya. It's Lily Jane. the recent tragedy that befell your mother's roses. My mom has worked extra hard to complete the repairs to your clothing. I, I just want to say that I'm really sorry about Resolve Cat. And I shouldn't have let it happen, but I did. I must say I was very disappointed by your behavior. You look to be more genial. Yes, ma'am. Genial as heck. Yeah, I hope you don't mind. This handsome man must be your father. I, too, understand how it feels to lose a loved one. Yeah, my, my mom said that your dad died, too. Actually, he's not truly and totally deceased. Well, where is he? He's not with us. Well, is he the reason you came here to live in Meta? No, I wouldn't say we live here. Not exactly. Not when I always picture somewhere else where everything is dancing, like people dancing in the streets. And everything is pretty, like children on their birthdays. It's not so bad here, though, is it? Oh, goodness, no. I know that it was the next best thing for us to move to this town, 
And the next best thing is often the best. Of course, my final destination has always been and will remain Hollywood, California. You see, my plan is to appear someday in motion pictures. You mean movies? For real? That's right, Billy Bob. Can't you just feel the excitement? I can, yeah. Uh, here, why don't you play the big troll? It works real good. What do you mean? Thought we were gonna go play some ball. Shh. Why? Quiet. Mom's sleeping. I forgot. I got World Series money. You know, chores to do. I'll see you later. Bye. Madeline. At least, I'd like to think I'm not, even though I know I am. But you're so remarkable, and that boy of yours, well, he needs a fall. Well, Mildred, I'll just put a notice up on the bulletin board at church. Good morning, Mrs. Murphy. I believe you know Sister Rosalba Cap. Of course. Hello, Rosalba. Ma'am. I came to discuss a bit of business with you. Business? Is that so? Since it is impossible for me to pursue my career in motion pictures here, the next best thing for me is to start a small venture on the side. Which is what I have done. A oh, venture? I see. Sister Rosalba and I are the sole subscription agents in this county for an impressive list of magazines. Oh, my. Girls, as much as I'd love to help you, I... To be sure, Mrs. Murphy. We're not here to sell you anything. I was thinking, those two boys seem so idle. And it occurred to me that they aren't men after all, at least in years. Do you suppose they would make a likely pair of assistants? I sure do. Your folks make equal commissions from the subscriptions you sell, which we will pay you at the end of every day. You can save your money for college. That is, if you want to go to college. Because neither one of you have got the brains to win a scholarship. Not even a football scholarship. I'll get a football scholarship. Yeah, he will. These here are your sales packets. Don't be getting them dirty. Now, if you have any questions, Sister Rosalba or I will be happy to answer them. Well, go on. Come on, preach. Preach, you know what this means? Nothing I do. We're gonna make it to the series. You reckon we will? All right. You take all the north side houses, and I'll take all the south, all right, bud? Whoa, we got something else we need to take care of. What's that? You know what I'm talking about. It's plain to see we both can't court Miss Bobbitt. And I know you've been thinking about it just like I have. That's foolish talk. I could care less. You're lying. And I know it if you don't. Just like when you lied about having them chores to do for the World Series dough. All right, fine. What are you suggesting we do about it? I got a way we can settle things once and for all, like gentlemen. Good. We do this selling. And whoever sells the most, the other guy backs off. 
fine. Good. No, hold it. You got three people in your family. They might sell you out in the first week. With what? Stolen money, I reckon. Fine. Family don't count. Deal? Deal. You won't, Billy Bob. You ain't gonna win this by cheating. You cheated first, bud. But come Friday, I'm gonna have me a new sweetheart. Billy Bob, I carry 32 magazines and 17 comic books. Oh. oh, yeah. No, sir. Thanks a lot, Mr. Trump. Don't slam that. Well, <clears throat> thanks anyway. Oh, Speedy. <laughs> I kid you, Billy Bob. Always like to support a worthy cause. Come on, Rosalba. I am. Wait a minute. I'm still thinking. Ma'am? I got something needs airing out. And what might that be, preacher? I hope you're checking your accounts careful because I got more than a sneaking suspicion that Billy Bob ain't turning over all his money. Come on, preach. That's damn lie. You know it. You're the liar, Billy Bob. And a cheat. Yeah, well, I'm not a thief. I didn't steal nothing. Somebody do something. You can't let him win, Billy Bob. You can't. Stop it. Honey, you've got to decide. Decide what, for goodness sake? You've got to decide who's your real, true sweetheart. Sweetheart? I should have known better than to get involved with a lot of country bumpkins. But I was just... It, but nothing. Now, you listen to me, preacher star. I don't want a sweetheart. And if I did, it wouldn't be you. He's a hard one, Billy Bob. She don't want nothing but to make trouble between friends. Come on, let's go get us a pop. Are you working today or what? What's the point? Can't go to the World Series all by myself. What do you want me to do? Well, you can grab that jar of flatheads and see them three fence pickets. You can toss them in the back of the truck. She said thanks, and it's about dang time. Right down here. All right. That's right. Now, Malcolm, you're sure that your pop's gonna let you go all the way to St. Louis with me to the World Series? Oh. I got one. Let's go. Up here at the top. Ready? All right. One, two, don't cheat. Three. Oh! <laughs> Don't cheat. Billy Bob, we would like 
to invite you to enjoy a game of three-handed bridge with me and Sister Azalba. Have you ever played? N no, just poker with Craig. Never mind. Well, that's of no importance. We will teach you, won't we, Sister Azalba? Yeah, I guess. Can we go in your treehouse? Yeah, sure. All right, now calm down. Just let the girls win, okay? Now, is that good advice or bad advice? Just go, go. All right. Are you ready? Y'all pardon the mess. Excuse me, Mrs. Sawyer. We'll just squinch by you. Billy Bob, why don't you make some room for the young ladies? And Mrs. Bob? planned all week to speak this morning from the book of Luke, so I shall. But perhaps many of you are wondering whether God or Satan moves among us this morning, whether that clever deceiver Lucifer is leading us toward the darkness. Do you recall how Jesus himself answered the devil's temptation? He said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan. Yes, Ms. Bobbitt. Pastor Williams, I'm sorry to interrupt, but like Jesus, I've been sorely tempted of the devil and can perhaps add some insight to your sermon. I'm sure the congregation agrees with me that we can always benefit from the perspective of from being inside another skin. That's enough. Come on, preach. This is just not right. If anybody else wants to go, please do so now. Do continue, Miss Bobbitt. First of all, sir, it's easy to sit here on a Sunday morning and talk about being righteous, yet let the devil whisper his meanness in your ear. And it is another thing entirely to resist the devil and be truly compassionate. 
If merely one person invites him around, the devil can whisper through a whole town, and suddenly everyone's lost their sense of decency. Even those who think they've got him behind them can't get his lies out of their ears. If I understand you, Miss Barbara, I believe you're saying that even those who consider themselves righteous sometimes need to look in the mirror and see if that's the person they want to see looking back at them. Sir, you have understood me perfectly. And Jesus also tells us to love the outcast among us that we may become the true children of our Father. Amen, Brother Spencer. That's right. God bless you, Sheriff. Let us pray from the Gospel according to Luke. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company for their Lord's sake. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Amen. Amen. There we go. Come on, who's help? I'm gonna teach you how to dance. Now, okay. So you put your hand on my shoulder, I'll be the leading man, and I put my hand on your hip. And we're both gonna join hands like this. And we go one, two, three, one, two, three, back, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's it. You'll be ready for the cotillion in no time. I never been to a cotillion before. Huh. There is a first for everything, isn't there? <laughs> well, isn't this a fine sight? A white girl in a color dancing in the noonday sun. Now you listen to me. You may find this type of behavior acceptable in the woods where you grew up, but in the presence of ladies... You ain't no lady. <laughs> Everyone knows you ain't nothing but a floozy. Why, Sister Roselba, I do believe we'll be ready for the cotillion in no time. <laughs> I'm just a dumb colored, and that's what I'll always be. <laughs> It was a very brave thing you did. It was? Brave and, and foolish. Now, we're going to have our picnic and we're going to dance. feel about violence. But, Ma, you should have heard all the horrible things they were saying. I know. Those star boys have been needing a lesson since the day they learned to walk. But I want you to promise me something, son. What's that? I want you to promise me that you will not spend the rest of your life defending the honor of that little girl. But Daddy always said that the lady is in need of defending. I know what your father said. And it was good advice at the time. But right now, I'm asking you to do this thing for me. Promise? I can't promise. But I'll try, Ma. See your nickel and raise a nickel. So what'd you do when he said he wasn't interested, Mr. Quince? Well, gentlemen, I simply looked Mr. Louis B. Mayer square in the eyes and I said, sir, there's no choice in the matter. That little girl's gonna be the biggest thing in pitches. 
And that is how Miss Lana Turner went from sweater girl to movie star overnight. <laughs> I'll see you and raise you a dime, Mr. Trump. Don't try to bluff me, sir. I <laughs> warn you. See the dime, raise another nickel. Believe you're the first celebrities we ever had in Madam Miss Quince. That's well, very kind of you, sir. I think a man on the cover of Life magazine qualifies as a celebrity. Well, that is right, Pumpkin. How could we forget about the greasy man under the hood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> It must take a real gift to spot talent like you do. Who else did you discover for Hollywood, Mr. Quince? Well, nobody this week, but I am hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> Which gives me a little idea. I'll see you and call. Whoa, Jeb, too good, too darn good for me. <laughs> That's too darn good. You know, I bet you've got a star in the making right here in Meadow. You know, we could put on a talent contest. First prize, a trip to Hollywood, and a screen test with Mr. Louis B. Mayer. Yeah. What do you think of that idea, Dove? That is a beautiful idea, Lionel. You're not joking with us now, are you? Sir, I do not joke about Mr. Louis B. Mayer. Now, we've got to get organized. We could do it next Monday. No, Monday I got, uh, and then I got something on Tuesday. When? We'll do it next Thursday. I'll get a committee together, and we'll get up to church like we did with the Christmas pageant. We need to let everyone know. Oh, I'll take care of that. Gentlemen, it looks like we got ourselves an event. Now, Mr. Speedy, you may want to sign up so you can showcase your belt tightening prowess. <laughs> Dazzling and tremendous, how quick the sunrise will kill me. Blue Jane! Blue Jane! Blue Jane! Talent show! Here! Louis B. Mayer, Thursday, Hollywood, Lily Jane, at last. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mason. You're welcome. <laughs> I never heard that before. Oh, Lord. Mm. Sir, Mr. Dixon, now this is a fine cola. It is a perfect balance of syrup and carbonation. Few men could achieve such a tangy beverage. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Miss Quince, I don't mean to bother you, but these here star boys, and I know you can't put stock in what they say, but they tell me you might have a line on some jobs for our young men. Oh, I knew I couldn't trust you boys. I knew it the minute I laid eyes on you. Just kind of slipped out, Mr. Quince. Just plopped out. Is it true, Mr. Quince? Well, I guess the secret's out now, isn't it? All right, but you gotta promise to keep it between us. Now, as you might surmise, I have certain connections, certain relationships, and I should not be telling you this, but any boy of legal age comes to me with a $150 deposit for upfront expenses, shall receive a position on one of several fruit vessels that make the journey from New Orleans to the continent of South America. Now, I know this seems like a steep price to pay, but my goodness, imagine the experience that your boys will have as they sail down to the sea of chips, as Shakespeare noted. Or was it the other fellow noted that, uh, um, uh, th th who knows that? So after a few years, he will return home with his pockets full and his soul alive with tales of living out in the high seas. Now remember, keep this between us. Now there's a limited number of positions available, and I, one man, can only serve so many. You'd have to give me a couple of days. I could sell an option on my crop. Will you do that, sir? Ma'am? Great pie. Ada, you've been saving for that angel headstone since Walter passed on. And now you're gonna give it away to this Quince man? We don't know anything about him. Tommy's all I have left, Eleanor. I just think it's time I started concentrating on the living. All right, we can't collect for anybody else. We gotta save it all for Miss Bobby. Now, Billy Bob, let's not forget our manners. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Welcome to the first annual Meta Talent Show. I am your proud and humble producer, Lionel Quince. Thank you very much. First off, we're going to meet a young lady, Evelyn Linford, who does her own choreography to Swan Lake. Now she really stinks. Romeo, deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, and for thy name, which is not part of thee, take all of myself. Continue playing, son. Preacher Stone. Lionel Quist is not cut into the bespattering of the American soldier. Captain Bryant, the chorus. Glory, glory, hallelujah. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. What do I see? Trouble is looking right back at me with a face that I just love to call my own. So I turn to the mirror to scream and shout, please help me, Lord, please help me out. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to change the fact that change. Come on, honey, take a good look now, because trouble is coming to town. Preacher Star, son, you better get over yourself. Dear mother, sweet mother, no! sweet mother. Oh, 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 come on, come on. Easy, Acey. Come on, get off the ring. Come on now. Yeah. Any respect for anyone on God's green earth, then stop. And now we come to our final contestant. It says here that she'll be singing an original composition. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Lily 
Jane Bobbitt. One dream can change you, one dream can make all the difference one heart can take. I dream of flying high in midair. I have to wonder. The sky's the limit, today's the day, heavens are still there when skies are gray, some days are better than they seem, some days are better because you dream on rainbows too. To dream, isn't that what tomorrow is for? Only a dreamer knows what I know, what it's like to wonder and then let go of rainbows to rainbows. I know what I see. I have to. Now remember, everybody, you must be right here Monday morning at 10 o'clock precisely. A representative of the International Fruit Company will be here to greet you and give you your departure times and vote itineraries. And Miss Lily Jane Bobbitt, since these people are personal friends of mine, they will also deliver your itinerary as well as your first class travel arrangements to Hollywood. Now I shall proceed you there and prepare the red carpet. <laughs> Mr. Quince, I sure hope I haven't misjudged you. I assure you, sir, you have not. Bye-bye, hon. Bye-bye. Take good care. Bye, Mr. Oh! 
sometimes look at Billy Bob. My thing was Robert should have come back, and neither didn't. Don't say that. I swear, if I'm still standing upright by the time those judges make their decision, it'll be a miracle of God. Mr. Heck out of them, too. I'm gonna take Billy Bob fishing one afternoon. Well, Donald, I think that's between you and Billy Bob. What time is it, Mom? Is it time yet? Two minutes till ten. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations, Lily Jane. I thought you might like some reading material for your trip. The Devil and Daniel Webster. <laughs> oh, that, that's so kind. I've also enclosed my address, should you care to exchange ideas. I think we should go home. Can we just stay for a little bit longer? It's been five hours. You know what? I bet the fruit company guy got car trouble. Don't you be laughing, preacher. Believe me, Billy Bob. I ain't laughing. Folks, I got some bad news. I just got off the phone with the sheriff over at Dagsville. The fruit company fellow was supposed to show up there last week. He never showed. Oh, oh, dear. oh, this is so cruel. Yes, it is.
hit your neck of the woods, you beware. Now let me know. Appreciate it. You boys sure you don't know where that Quince fellow was headed? No, I told you, sure don't. Well, you keep your two eyes out. And good luck with that old glunk of yours. Just gonna need more than a new battery to get it going. Well, uh, thanks, Sheriff Speedy. You bet. Take care now. Bye bye. Hey, Speed, let me ask you something. Why would them Star Brothers buy a battery with money they don't got for an old clunker got no engine in? How would you know that? Because I bought the engine block from that heap of junk a week ago Thursday. Ace, you take Pound Line Road, Jeff, take the river. We're going to find this character. I do not like being made a fool of. Let's go, boys. Get him. Come on. Come on. Let's hunt him down. I think it's just a shame about you and Preacher. How much fun do you think it'll be to go to that World Series all by yourself? I don't think I'm gonna be able to count on Preach, Mom. Um, Mom, uh, can I be excused? Sure. Take your plate, please. Yes, Mom. <laughs> What is this? It's the anonymous note. What Sister Rosalba means is that this is an anonymous note. No, she doesn't. That right there is an anonymous note. Anyway, we received it earlier this evening. Well, what are we gonna do? I mean, Sheriff Speedy and them left this afternoon. Time has come to take action, Billy Bob. Fortunately, I have formulated a plan. <laughs> Lionel Quince? Well, if it isn't my little starling. Mr. Quince, by the authority vested in me, by the state of Alabama and the U.S. Constitution, I am placing you under citizen's arrest. Now, if you would please come with me. Citizen's arrest? Whew. You do have a flair for the theatrics. That's it? That's your big plan? By law, he must comply with my instructions. He's a crook. He doesn't care about the law. Your friend's right. Then why don't you listen to him and move along before something terrible happens to you? We're not leaving here until you agree to come with us. Well, that is just not possible. Hey, Pumpkin, what's going on here? Madam, we have no quarrel with you. I trust you understand my distress. 
Mr. Queens broke his contractual obligation to me and many of the fine people of Meta. Little girl, you've wasted too much of my time. Now, normally I don't make it a habit to harm children, but in your case, I'm going to make an exception. Uh, uh, Bob, submarine! Uh, submarine! Uh, submarine. Uh, help! Uh, uh, Billy Bob and Miss Bobby and that other little girl are missing. When's the last time you saw them? Speedy, that sounds like you're a truck. I'm sure we're real anxious to hear what you got to say, but just now, put a cork in it. Sheriff, we got one more for you. That's our money! We want our money back! I hold it, you're all gonna get your money. It's as soon as we figure out who belongs to what. The important thing is that everyone will surely get what's coming to them. I don't think everyone will get what's coming to him, Donald. Seems to me if it weren't for that little girl, you'd all still be standing here with your pockets empty. It's a magical night, my dear. Mm -hmm. A magical night. We didn't do nothing, Sheriff Speedy. You gotta believe it's Jeff Tellum. Aiden and the betting, I fell into something. We're still gonna get our money, right, Mr. Quinn? Uh, Mr. Trump, could you pull up to the side of the road there? I, I gotta make one. Hi, preacher. So why'd you send that whole ominous note thing anyway? Well, I didn't figure that I could do that whole moral restitution deal alone. You can throw it because you got the better arm, but don't miss. I won't miss. <laughs> Dear Lily Jane, we give this note in hopes it will help you achieve your dream of making it to Hollywood. We ask for nothing in return but to remain your devoted and anonymous admirers. P.S. If you try and give it back, we will just toss it into the garbage, so you might as well keep it. a couple pops. I'm not going to die, you know. Angels fill the empty places along the way. Heaven only knows. He'll come out to Hollywood and we'll climb a mountain. And we'll all live together, you and me 
I am Sister Rosario. Would you do me the honor? Looks like heaven's here. Heaven, a reddest road. Heaven. Thank you for everything. Be careful, Ojai. Okay. Imagine what it could be. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's only fitting that you should be the first to use it. Last roses are gonna waste just sitting over there. Have a safe trip. Thanks. This is Mrs. Quince's brooch. Where'd you get that?
Cormac. Janice? Would you like to come in for a cold lemonade? Well, I'm not sure we have enough time for a cold drink right now. I do. I have time. Come on, Roselle. See you at home, Ma. We'll walk her home, Miss Cat. All right, then, there, you young people. All right, then. Billy Bob? Oh, right. Come on, Cormac. You know, I really thought that you were close second at the talent show. Really? Billy Bob, that's awful nice of you to say. And Janice? That tap dancing and a juggling? I couldn't have done that. Preacher Star, I know you left that squirrel sitting at the top of that bridge. Lucky for you, I see the tarnish. I see the gleam. I have to wonder. Something in a moon Never lets me go Some things never change Some things I wish I didn't know Didn't count on you Now who wants you so And who some things I wish I didn't know. Maybe it's Monday, a quarter to nine, or it could be Friday. What good is time? Ooh. 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 
don't sleep the way I used to. Don't eat not like before. Don't love you like I used to. Don't know why I love you more. Something in the moon never lets me go. Some things never change. Some things I wish I didn't know. Some things never change. Some things I wish I didn't know.